Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Taffel and today we are doing another episode of UFDPM's Programs Research Talks. Today we have Hannah Talton as our guest. So Hannah, can you start by introducing yourself? Hi, yeah. Hi, Sarah um, and everyone. My name is Hannah Talton. I am going into my third year as a Doctor of Plant Medicine student and I am from Greensboro, North Carolina originally and I have been in Gainesville for about four years now, um, working on finishing my doctorate and uh, hopefully soon, I don't know what the uh, future holds, but uh, hopefully I'll get a good career at the end of this. Yeah, I think we all hope that. So many DPM students participate in research throughout the program. So what is your field of research and why did you focus on this? Yeah, so I am currently working on two different research projects uh, as a DPM student. I work first, my first project was with Dr. Amanda Hodges, my chair. Um, we are doing a collaborative effort for monitoring and surveying for Helicoverpar midra, or common name Old World bullworm. Um, and it is an invasive species of moth. And uh, it's really devastating on different um, economic crops that we have like cotton, peanuts, um, and uh, corn, sorghum. And so we're trying to make sure that it hasn't gotten into Florida. So my first research project is an intensive monitoring survey for this invasive species up in the Mayo, Florida area in Lafayette County, where we have a lot of different commodities, like I mentioned, the corn, the sorghum, um, and things of that nature. And it's a major pathway uh, for, you know, crops and things of that nature moving in and out through the highway systems. Um, so it's one of the other ports of entry that this pest could get in. Um, so I am bucket trapping. It's a uh, method um, where we use lures and pheromones to try to attract male moths to see if they are present in these particular cropping systems. So the moths would fly in, and then we would count them just and identify the species, um, which we, one of our collaborators is Dr. Uh, Todd Gilligan. He's at the Fort Collins uh, Research Lab, uh, Diagnostics Lab, and he's under the USDA APHIS. And so we send off our moths for molecular analysis to confirm or deny that uh, we have Helicoverpar midra or not. Um, most uh, moths that we have caught um, are Helicoverpa zaya, which is the corn earworm. And they are similar in, in um, color and ID. So the only way you can distinguish them is either through molecular analysis or genitalia dissection. So I'm working on that and in, that is one of the projects and I've been working on that for about going on my second year now uh, working on that project. I am currently on a new project with my co-chair Dr. Danielle Treadwell. She is a um, horticulturalist that focuses on organic carrot production. And I'm working with her in an integrated study with um, a soil scientist, a nematologist, as well as a plant pathologist. And we are kind of collaborating all together to determine the different effects um, of carrot growth, organic carrots above and below ground. So I'm super excited about that. I just started that this year and um, I'm excited to see what those results hold. Awesome. So for that current project, uh, what are your methods in collecting the data? Okay, so for the uh, mass trapping that we do for Helicoverpa Midra, we do, we set up bucket traps out in five different farms. I have five different farms that grow different things and rotate different crops throughout the year. So we put out five bucket traps at each farm and we um, apply an accepted side strip inside of the buckets and we put the pheromone to attract. So it's a specific pheromone for this moth species and we put it into the bucket and we 
give it about uh, every two weeks, we go in and we check that trap, um, those traps. So it's a total of 25 traps and we go out and, and I go out and check them um, bi-weekly on Wednesdays uh, specifically and uh, go out and empty the traps as well as service them. Um, if uh, you all want to see uh, me in action, you can go and look at the Doctor of Plant Medicine in Action video where I do go through the step-by-step -step process of servicing my bucket traps. Little plug there. <laughs> and uh, for the carrot project, I currently have been uh, sampling carrots every uh, week on Mondays, uh, where I go out and I do destructive sampling and we uh, weigh all the roots and shoots of those carrots just to get a specific curve of how they're growing throughout the year before harvest. And we also have different uh, fertilizer treatments out there that provide different nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And we're trying to determine which fertilizer, either the feather meal or um, poultry litter, is going to be better in uh, providing enough um, nutrients for these crops, uh, for these carrots throughout the year. Um, and then I just recently uh, finished uh, taking some soil samples for the soil scientist that's on the project where I'm rotating in different labs. So I'm excited to see um, the different methods from the different individuals that are on the project. I get to experience and go into their labs and uh, different at different stages within the project and then work on different aspects. So carrot sampling is every Monday and I, we're measuring the growth and how well the carrots are growing. And then um, just recently I did soil core sampling where we're testing for nitrogen in the soil, how much nitrogen we're extracting um, from the soil. So that was super exciting. I go back and read those results to determine how much uh, nitrogen in those different fertilizer treatments have been providing our carrots. And then hopefully soon I get to discover some nematodes just to see if there's some issues going on underneath the soil and what type of species that we're having out there. And this is all taking place at Live Oak um, Extension Office. And uh, so I go out there and uh, so we're going to be counting nematodes, seeing the presence and absence and what species those are. And we will also be working on alternaria for disease, plant diseases. So I'll be working with a plant pathologist on the project to determine if we've um, experienced any alternaria issues with the organic carrots. So a lot of different moving parts within the project. I am one of the first students to get to work on this. So I'm the model student or guinea pig, as you would say, just to see um, how effective it is to bring in a DPM student who's already been incorporated in these wide array of topics and then apply it to a specific project that's so integrated. Yeah, that's a really great opportunity. Um, so, so far, what are the results that you've been seeing? For the trapping, mass trapping for the invasive species and all of the data we have collected, molecular analysis that we've gotten um, from Mayo, Florida, we're also working with um, a uh, Dr. Paula uh, Palmarez in J Florida. They're doing that same exact experiment trapping for these um, invasive species moths. So we are working together. We're gonna combine that data. Um, but for the two years that we've been running the experiment, we have not yet um, found Helicoverpa armigera in any of our cropping systems. So that is a positive. We know that it is very destructive and if it was to establish in Florida that our crops would be um, an effect, um, we're going to be affected by this particular species. So that's a plus. We've um, based on all of the uh, molecular analysis uh, that Dr. Gilligan has run, we have no sign of Helicoverpa armitra. We have been definitely finding Helicoverpa zea in most of the traps. So I'm still working on analyzing that statistical data so I can get a nice uh, graph and show everybody, you know, my results. So that should be coming in the near future. I'm writing up and doing some literature review with that. Um, so for right now, the CARIP project is also um, still in its intermediate stage. 
we haven't collected all of the data that we need um, to make a conclusion from all the different aspects. Um, but for the couple of carrots that I have weighed, we see that they're growing really, really well and that potentially the um, fertilizer is having a good effect. So that project should be, um, for harvesting should be in late March, early April, and I can um, have those results kind of ironed out a little bit more. So still preliminary in both of the studies, um, but we're, I'm super excited to see what the results uh, hold. All right, well, thank you for uh, explaining your research. So do you think the DPM program has prepared you to take on all of these projects? Yes, um, for the trapping for Helicoverpa armidra, we're, I'm learning different things about ag law, regulatory things within the DPM program and how they go about trapping for invasive species in other parts of the world and how the IPPC or, uh, or the plant protection and quarantine through APHIS goes about making protocols for these trapping and making sure these pests um, aren't getting into the United States. Um, I'm learning all about that. So it correlates very well with the collaborative effort with USDA, um, APHIS, as well as um, other collaborators in J Florida. So it's really been a great um, project to collaborate with and see how things are done on the government side and how the protocols are made through uh, CAPS protocols and things for um, invasive species. So I work in the uh, plant biosecurity lab. So understanding the risks that a, if a pest was to get into Florida, how it would be a really bad issue um, for our crops here as in the diversity that we have. So I'm, I've learned that and for the carrots, my background is in horticulture. So it's been great getting back to, um, going back to my background in, in horticulture crops. Um, although the agronomic crops are cool, um, though, that's just my, that's where my heart is. So I love my horticulture crops and I feel as though I, for the interdisciplinary of this project and the integratedness working with different professors in different uh, departments like plant pathology, uh, nematology, as well as horticulture and weed science, actually, um, this project brings all of those professors together. And since I am a DPM student and we get to touch all of those different coursework and those classes we take and to gain that interdisciplinary knowledge, it has helped me to be a good uh, helping hand within this project and be uh, very interactive and apply the knowledge that I have learned in these classes to an actual research project. So I feel as though the DPM program has prepared me more than enough um, to take on these two projects that I'm currently doing right now. And the fact that it has given me the opportunity to still do research um, while taking these course, these um, courses, these wide array of courses, um, I think it's phenomenal. So I personally love the DPM program and the opportunities that it has opened up for me. I'm really glad to hear that. So to finish up, do you have any advice to new DPM students on how to be successful when completing their own research? Yes, I would say definitely write things down. So your methodology is very important. Um, so definitely step by step writing those things out, what you do, when you do it, how you do it um, is very critical when going back and writing a manuscript or a particular thesis or at um, or whatever you're deciding to um, write up um, for a project or a grant. It's very uh, strategic to go ahead and write down your steps that you are taking um, to stay on top of it, stay organized. So when, you go, when you're going to sit down and write it up, you'll have everything, you'll have your dates and you'll be able to write it up a little bit uh, better. I will say start writing early. So <laughs> for your research, um, 
getting out a manuscript, getting out a publication, an Edis article, a blog, any type of format that you're trying to get your science out there, I would say start writing it up, even if it's just a draft. Um, get it written down, uh, get it written down. So then as you take your time, block off that time to write, because um, that's very important. So then by the time that it's due or that something's coming up or you have to write an abstract for you know a conference you know you know your research um, like the back of your hand because you are your the expert in what you do so that would be the advice that i would give definitely a fine time to write um, and then stay organized and document everything you do all right, well, thank you very much, Hannah. I appreciate you zooming in today to share all this info. You're very welcome. And thank you to our viewers. So stay tuned for more episodes.